How many of you have experienced this before? Raise your hands if you have. So you attend a great conference and you hear several inspiring speeches. You'd like to know more and you'd like to understand. However, digging deeper into a topic during the conference is a bit tricky and the next day you feel too busy to start exploring key concepts and relevant articles because that takes a lot of time. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm Maria from Iris AI, and this is my co-founder, Anita. We are here to solve that particular problem for you. Our team is building an AI science assistant that helps you map out and find scientific knowledge that you cannot miss. Or easier said, our tool gives you a shortcut to science around all the talks that are given here in this conference today. Now, before we show you how the tool works and how you can start playing around with it, a couple of words about our startup and why we do what we do. So we believe that human beings have already discovered most of the, the big problems that we're facing today. The challenge is that these solutions come in the shape of puzzle pieces. So a research paper, a conference report in Chinese, an internal memo in a big corporation, they're completely scattered. And the abundance that we have today of knowledge, it was mentioned earlier today that every, every 73 days, we double the amount of medical knowledge that we have. But our human brains don't have sufficient computational power to read and make sense of everything. And that's what we're why we're building IRIS. Every day, more than 3,000 research papers are published in science, technology, and medicine. And half of them are read by less than five people. And we think, that, think that's kind of sad. So that's why we're building IRIS. And when we decided to do this, an artificial intelligence that will read all of the research in the world and help us connect the dots, that's, that's not a small undertaking, we asked ourselves, where do we start? And what we decided was that we wanted to start with the entrepreneurs, the innovators, the corporate innovators, the people who are putting research into practice on a daily basis. And that's the first tool we're building, an AI that will help you navigate the scientific world as you're going to see from the tool that we're attaching to this conference. However, in a five-year perspective, Iris won't only be able to show you the research, she will also be able to start connecting the dots, looking at specific methods, specific subject matter, specific results for you. In a 10-year perspective, Iris might become a researcher herself, digging into a topic, creating a hypothesis based on the literature. We could even connect her to a robotic lab and have her run experiments and write research papers. Why not, right? And in, in an even longer run, Iris will not only be able to train human beings in science, but also other artificial intelligences, which is sort of cool. Um, so why hasn't this been done before? This first tool that we're talking about, well, the thing is, it hasn't been possible up until now, and we've, we've talked about this, and most of the talks today has been about that, the incredible pace of technology that we're seeing right now. And there's three specific things that are happening right now and has been happening over just the couple, last couple of years that is making IRIS possible. First of all, it is the AI technology in itself. The computational power we have access to now and the massive amounts of data makes AI technology now something you can actually implement. The second is the digital world that we live in, and we are creating a crowd-trained AI, so we could reach people from literally all across the world that can help train Iris. And finally, the access to scientific knowledge, right? And we've seen the movement in open source um, software, we've seen the movement in open source hardware, and we're also seeing it in open access research. More and more research is becoming available to us mere mortals that don't sit in these ivory towers, right? Um, so that's that. So thanks to all these advances, about two and a half months ago, our baby AI was born. We call her our baby not just because um, we created it, but also because it is a very young AI. The first thing that we wanted to give Iris to read was ideas worth spreading, the TED Talks. So that was a start. Now, our Future Health Conference is our next step. As I told you, We'll give all the talks of this conference for Iris to read and understand. That's a vast body of knowledge, including all the talks that are delivered here on stage today, as well as more than 1,000 talks that are already online. So now I think it's time for us to look at the tool and how it works. So our AI doesn't understand spoken words, which is why we need transcripts. 
we created a script of this talk and gave it for Iris to read and understand. Now what you can see uh, is a visual overview of key concepts of this talk. You can zoom in to the most interesting concepts and find relevant research papers from there, like this one on personalized search and design. All the research papers that you can find now when you use this tool are from the directory of open access journals, which is a repository of more than two million research papers. Now, reading and understanding are really, really interesting themes when we talk about an artificial intelligence. Um, in context of IRIS, by that we mean a process through which our algorithm analyzes keywords and clusters them in order to understand what those words mean in their context. Then our AI identifies synonyms and runs through this process called topic modeling. Now, this is the part of the process where the algorith our algorithmic brain of Iris starts to understand um, how all the different concepts are linked to each other across all the talks. So that's the technical part of it. Now, as I told you, our AI is still very young, and she doesn't always understand everything that she reads. So she struggles, for instance, with, um, with metaphors, with anecdotes, and with irony. Um, and we assess that around 70% of the concepts that you can find are more or less uh, the right ones. So Iris can extract the right concepts with a 70% probability. Um, so in case you find a funny concept like the ones on the screen, the dancer, for instance, um, it's uh, because of that. Well, now she's making it somehow <laughs> relevant by dancing. Um, so, so that's that. Now, practically, what you can do with this tool today, with Iris, any talk that you're fascinated, fascinated, fascinated about starts and works as a starting point for further exploration. Now, to explore, you just need to go to ourfuturehealth.org and you'll find all these results maps from that website by tomorrow evening or when the transcripts are ready. We are on our way to build an artificial intelligence to take science out of ivory towers into the use uh, and, and into the real world. So today, when you feel you'd like to learn more, we hope that Iris can help you connect the dots and put science into good practice. Thank you. Thank you.